Good morning, and thank you, Nikki. That was lovely. Ain't gonna rain today. Welcome to Charlotte Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Welcome, especially to those of you worshiping remotely with us this morning. And thanks to Nikki and Cameron and our choir for providing music. Um, we are going to save the announcements for the end of the service today because we have a couple of big ones. But I did want to let you know that the bulletin this morning has a cover that is a coloring sheet. So if you need other colors, you can come and get different crayons. And um, I just wanted to highlight this today because um, we have a ministry of... Um, coloring books that a member of our congregation um, does every week. And so if you didn't know, there are coloring books and coloring bags available um, every Sunday if you ever want to take a coloring bag and color a page. So maybe you try it out today on your bulletin and then you decide, especially if you're a kid, that you want to grab a coloring bag. So here, Chol, would you come and light our peace candle for us? Thank you. As we light the peace candle this morning, um, we are reminded, we remind ourselves that we stand with the Prince of Peace. And even though there is fighting in the world and sometimes fighting in our homes or in our hearts, we practice and we sing Moved by Love. I invite you now to stand in body or spirit and join in our opening prayer and Lord's Prayer. As we say together, God, we gather together on Pentecost like those in ages past to rest together, pray, connect, sing, share, and listen. Thank you for this morning, for last night, for the week behind and the week ahead. Forgive us when we forget that you are with us always, bewildering us with your mystery. Today, help us feel you in the air, see you in the flame, and hear you when we listen to one another. In Christ's name we pray. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Save us in time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Our opening hymn is number 494, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. And I know it's kind of a weird one to sing on Pentecost because it's more of an all saints hymn, but I'll explain it during the time for children. So enjoy.
please be seated. And all children and youth are welcome forward. So good to see you this morning. What did you, I wonder if you noticed that that hymn talked about the saints of God and how they're all different people. And they're people just like you and just like me. We can all work with God. And so I heard that hymn um, several weeks ago at the funeral of Anne Brown. And Anne was Elise Berger's grandmother. Some of you might know Elise Berger because she has been in Sunday school sometimes, and she's also an amazing pitcher on the CVU baseball team. But Anne's funeral was here, and we sang that song, and I was so inspired. I thought, this is a song that our kids should sing on Children's Sunday. And so that is part of what you're going to do in Sunday school today. You get to sing that song to practice with Rich Price, who is going to play his guitar with you. So I'm so excited for you guys to sing that song and, and also to have an opportunity to sing with Rich Price. So thank you, Rich. Um, but the message of the song is that so many people are so different, right? And yet. We are all people who can work with God to, wake, to make the world a better place. Just like you and just like me are saints of God. So before you go and rehearse with Rich and then go to your Sunday school classes, will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for all of the different people. Help us to work with you to make this world a better place. Amen. Have fun. Well, this is different. <laughs> Let me figure out where we are now that I'm not leaving. <laughs> Prayers of the people and pastoral prayer. I love it. Okay, so um, I do have a couple of prayers to lift up today. Um, one is uh, from me. Prayers for all of the teenagers who went to prom last night. And um, may they each know that they are beloved as they navigate relationships. Um, and prayers for all of the tired parents who try to keep their babies safe as they wobble on the edge of the nest. Um, prayers from Jessica Scriver um, for her friend Erin from Colorado who lost her son Logan in a motorcycle accident on Friday. Sadly, she, she also lost her daughter Destry 12 years ago to a failed heart surgery when Destry was only four years old. So prayers for healing for Aaron's broken heart this morning and for all hearts who grieve uh, Logan and Destry. Are there other joys and concerns that you would like to lift up together this morning? Yes, Sam. Prayers for my uh, friend and Uncle Neil. Um, my Uncle Neil has memory issues and other things going on, and uh, my Aunt Fran has got her own issues, but my Uncle Neil had a small brain bleed lately, and then when they sent him home, he fell. <laughs> I guess he's doing okay, but 
just just prayers to healing for him and lifting up my aunt. Thank you. Could everyone hear that through the microphone? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Prayers for Aunt Fran and Uncle Neil. Yes, Vicki. Prayers for my cousin Betsy, who is unhoused. She is cared by her family, but she's unhoused and she's wandered a bit into Vermont from Maine and she struggles with mental wellness and I'm very concerned about her. So if we could just keep her in our thoughts that she is safe. Thank you. Thank you. Prayers for Cousin Betsy Yeah, as she navigates her way. <coughs> Any others this morning? Yes, of course, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Prayers for one of my close friends who just got a diagnosis of bladder cancer. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't know what she's in for, but prayers that. Okay, thank you. She will find. And um, what is her name? Randy. Randy. Prayers for Randy, who's been diagnosed with bladder cancer. Prayers for comfort. Yes. Prayers from Peg for her nephew who is struggling with a difficult marriage. Yes. Prayers for my husband who is in the care and protection of Wake Robin and for all the wonderful, wonderful nurses and care for each other. Thank you. And what is his name? Ted. Okay. Prayers for Ted in the nursing section of Wake Robin and for all of his caregivers. Maybe, may he have the best care. Thank you. Uh, prayers for my daughter as she is about to marry and um, is interviewed for a possible life with cancer. Wow. Um, which could be a little sad. She's going to call. OK. Thank you. So prayers for your daughter who is going to the Mayo Clinic for a possible liver transplant in Minnesota. May it be so and successful. <laughs> With that, in Sunday school, um, when we go over each Sunday, we begin with joys and concerns just as you do here. And so as we go around, um, the children share their joys and concerns. And um, then we hold silence for a bit. Um, and I end with uh, this prayer. So let's just hold silence for a bit. And um, I'll, I'll pray it as I do in Sunday school. Dear God, thank you for these people gathered this morning. Thank you for being with us in all of our joys and all of our concerns, the ones that we share with one another and the ones that we hold in our hearts and only you know. Amen. So as we come to our time of offering, um, Pentecost is known as the birthday of the church.
so let's celebrate. If you would like to offer anything to the church financially, there are baskets up here and in the back. There's a QR code on your bulletin. There's a way to offer on our website. But thank you for all of the birthday gifts that you give to this church. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing when the spirits sing. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing when the spirits sing. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing when the spirits sing. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing when the spirits sing. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing when the spirits sing. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing when the spirits sing. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing when the spirits sing. And obey the spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna sing. Good morning. The scripture today is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under the heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galleons, and how is it that we hear each our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Pyria and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine in the morning. 
No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, when everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May God bless this reading to our hearing and to our understanding. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, please land on me with your tongue of fire this morning, that my words may resonate with those listening. Amen. Can you remember times in your life when you have heard a sound that seemed to skip right past your brain and go straight to your heart, surprising you? What was it? The cry of your newborn? The warm-up of bagpipes? The wail of someone grieving? The belly laugh of a friend? Bird song in the evening? the hush of an ocean wave. Maybe it was the sound of the choir this morning. I wanted to tap my feet. Or the Onion River Jazz Band a few weeks ago. If you were here in church, you know that some of us just couldn't help ourselves. We, listening to those instruments, our heads wanted to nod, our feet wanted to tap, our elbows wanted to swing. Um, it felt astonishing and even perplexing. I'm not in the habit of spontaneously dancing in church, but there it was. The scripture today is about a sound that people heard with their hearts. And when they heard it, the scripture says, they were amazed and perplexed. Our scripture today is the second chap chapter of the book of Acts. In the first chapter, before Jesus ascends, he tells his disciples that another will come to them and never leave them. The Holy Spirit will be with them and they will be his witness to the ends of the earth. 
Then comes our scripture, set on the Jewish festival of Pentecost, 50 days after Passover, when Jews and people converted to Judaism traveled to Jerusalem from essentially the ends of the earth. Our scripture says the disciples were all together and wind filled the entire place. A flame landed on each of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. No one was left out. And they started to speak. Not really languages, most likely, but sounds that resonated with people, that made perfect sense. Theologian William Barclay writes that what happened on Pentecost back, that, that long ago Pentecost, was likely that for the first time in their lives, this mixed crowd was hearing the word of God in a way that stuck, struck straight home to their hearts and that they could understand. The power of the Spirit was such that it had given the disciples a message that could reach every heart. How can so many of us understand the same sound, they said, from people so different from us and understand it so perfectly? And what does that message mean for our lives? So they were amazed and perplexed. The holy truth both makes perfect sense and confuses. It depends if we're listening with our heads or our hearts. If we're listening with our heads, we should be amazed and, and perplexed. If we aren't asking, how is this possible, and what does this mean, then we probably aren't listening to God. The great mystery doesn't fit into our categories, our timeline, our sense-making. I imagine those in Jerusalem hearing the disciples' words, looking around, saying, did you hear that? What did he say? That we are beloved no matter what? That somehow even when we lose people, they stay with us? That life hurts so much sometimes and all will be well? That cannot be right. These guys must be drunk. Just ignore them. We're smart. We solve puzzles. We test theories, collect data, build things. We like to know things. We like to understand. For instance, now we know that sound is both a particle and a wave. Amazing. But scientists know that the more we understand, the more we realize we don't understand. For some crazy reason, I still remember one class with my seventh grade health teacher at Centennial Junior High School in Montrose, Colorado. It might have been the first day of class because the teacher was explaining to us about how his teaching had changed over the years, specifically about oral hygiene. I know, I don't know why I remember this, and I can't believe I'm talking about it from the pulpit, but what he said has stayed with me. He explained that first he was taught to teach kids to brush back and forth with hard bristles. And then they learned that gums were receding, so they changed the teaching to circular brushing with soft bristles. And then they learned that actually all of the bacteria is on the tongue, so we should really be brushing our tongues. And then that brushing with the tongues might brush off all our taste buds, which I think was later debunked. So I remember sitting there that day in class thinking, man, his job is futile. What is the point? But I think he was showing us that science is a process and not to hold on to the answers so tightly and don't be surprised when we learn more and what we thought we knew turns out to be wrong. Well, it's easy to sit with the unknown when the answer doesn't really impact us. It's easy, easy to live with the mystery of perfect oral hygiene. But when things really matter to us, 
sitting with the unknown is about as comfortable as sitting on a cactus when we are waiting for a diagnosis. It's more comfortable to do research on WebMD. When our children are suffering, we ask around or listen to a podcast. When we feel vulnerable to the results of an election, where we're anxious about climate change, we are glued to the news. What can we do? What messaging can we amplify? Don't just sit there. While we live in this very human world, it doesn't make sense to stop paying attention to the news or research or other sources of information. But you know what makes less sense? Paying attention to them more than the source of wisdom, which is always accessible to us. And so back in Jerusalem, Peter says no. It's not the wine. He says, and listen for the perplexing and radically inclusive language here, fellow Jews and all, this has been prophesied. God's kingdom is a place where all flesh has the spirit poured out on them. And the world as we know it is unrecognizable. The youngest, most naive, Boys and girls, and girls, that's a big deal to say at that time, will speak the truth. Young and old will know the truth. Even the lowliest slaves, men and women, will have the power of the Spirit and will be heard. And not just people will be different, but the very earth and sky will seem so different that it scares us. And then what? Peter's last line is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on God, not the experts, everyone who listens to the Holy Spirit will be saved. I know the language of being saved is loaded. But if we see it as being brought to life, I bet we can all hear the truth, that we are brought to life when we connect with the divine in ourselves, in one another, in all creation. We feel it in our hearts, in our tears, in our dancing feet. And when we don't, we live in a broken place of anxiety and division. We die, in a sense. In order to tune our ears to the divine, though, we need to turn down the volume on everything else. By way of example, let me tell you about a former neighbor of ours who was a great gardener. He fed his entire family, and I would often look longingly at his bushy kale, bright tomatoes, and full broccoli. We often saw him standing in the street, staring at his garden for extended periods of time and we couldn't imagine what he was doing. We honestly thought, and I am not proud of this, is he okay? <laughs> the irony is that we'd say this as we drove back and forth between home and three grocery stores and work and other activities, zooming past with our very busy schedules. We couldn't imagine he was doing anything valuable, like noticing paying attention to creation and his role in it, observing what was parched and what needed more light, what was being attacked by bugs, and how to remedy that situation without poisoning them and his family, what was ready to harvest and how to cook it for dinner, thoughtfully planning how to best tend to things. And of course, in communing with nature, he was also communing with the divine, acting in accordance with the weather, the daily and seasonal cycle of the sun, syncing his actions with the Holy Spirit that is as quiet as a breeze some days, 
or as violent as a rainstorm. Reverend Dr. Cheryl A. Lindsay says, the tension of the gospel message is the call to be in this world while not being worldly. In other words, we live in a community with neighbors, siblings, and enemies while adopting the culture of the beloved community that transcends societal norms. She reminds us that Jesus lived in community, but was known for retreating from the crowds and even his trusted chosen companions when he needed to center. For Jesus, it was a means of returning to himself. At best, when we engage spiritual practices, like coming here, we too return to who at essence we have been created to be. It is an opportunity to recharge, renew, and restore. As followers of Jesus, we are called to live in a way that listens to God more than anything else, more than the research, more than the experts, more than Wall Street or Washington, journalists, or even scientists. Our highest calling is to live in collaboration with the divine. And that means we have to practice listening to the Holy Spirit more than we listen to everything else, including pastors. So I will stop clogging the airwaves now so we can sit in silence for a few minutes, listening for the truth in the vibrations of our own beating hearts. Holy Spirit, renew us, recharge us, restore us. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as you are able for our closing hymn, which is... Wind who makes all winds that blow, number 217.
Please be seated. So a few announcements this morning. Um, next Sunday, David Radcliffe from the New Community Project will be in worship with us, and he will preach before joining us in fellowship time. Afterward, um, he will, and uh, several members of the congregation will be going to Starksboro from 1.45 to 3 p.m to see their food share program in operation. So if you're interested in attending that, you can talk to me, you can talk to Kevin. Um, Kevin will be home tomorrow. Um, June 2nd is Children's Sunday, so I'd like to invite you all to please come, let the kids lead you in worship. Uh, rising fourth graders will also receive their Bibles that day. Um, Michelle, would you like to speak about fellowship sign-up? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, um, summer's here, or so it seems, um, and we are in need of people to host fellowship through uh, June and beyond. Um, the sign-up is over there. The first... Sunday, next Sunday, um, will is covered, but the rest of the month we need um, some people to help out with fellowship and throughout the rest of the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other announcements this morning before we have a special garden project update? Okay, so Jim, oh yeah, Rich. Here, actually, let me give you this so that people can hear online. Thank you. Um, you, this congregation has been so um, supportive of my nephew who ha had that terrible uh, shooting in November. If you're interested, and I know many of you are, um, he has an op-ed in the Sunday Times today. Uh, it's very, very moving, very uh, powerful, um, and I encourage you all to check it out. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so Jim. Dave. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Jim Hyde. It's Dave Spidell. This will be quick. We know enough not to stand in the doorway at the end of the service on a beautiful day like this and uh, stand between you and getting outside and enjoying a summer day. But we wanted to give you a, just a quick update on where we are with the garden project. Um, and we can continue with this afterwards in fellowship hour. Dave and I brought some drawings. And there are other members of uh, our task force here. Bob Chudder is here. Um, Nick Smith, I see, is here. I think Francis, Francis is here. Um, I think Joan, Joan Weed and Christy uh, are here. So um, this is just a quick update. This project began over two years ago, but really it's been since last August that we've been working uh, on the garden project sort of full speed ahead. And um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from the congregation um, in that time, uh, including at the annual meeting that we had uh, back in March. And as a result of that, over the last several months, the thought uh, and thoughts about the garden have evolved a great deal. I mean, we started out originally viewing this garden as a space for people to leave the remains of loved ones or family members who wanted an alternative to a traditional kind of burial. But over time, and as we listened to feedback from the congregation, it became clear that people were also interested in seeing this as a, an extension of the sanctuary, as a way, actually, we could provide a space for um, having small gatherings, a place for meditation, a place for place for prayer, perhaps for a baptism, or even a wedding. And that if we began to think of the garden as, an, as, a, as going beyond the wall, the boundary of the wall, and thinking as a, a way to bring worship into nature and nature into worship, this would really be a tremendous potential enhancement to the campus here at the Shalak Congregational Church and a way to um, express our love uh, for this place. So our, our 
vision has evolved a great deal over that time, and you'll see that in some of the drawings and in some of the diagrams that we have um, here today. Um, we also see it as a place to um, express the qualities that are part of living in Vermont. So we want to make sure that we focus on best practices environmentally in this garden, that we use native plants and native species, um, that we um, do everything that we can to support the Vermont arts and Vermont artists. And so um, as a real expression of what it means to, um, to be in Vermont. So the timeline for this garden is uh, tentatively, it may be fantasy, but uh, the way we see it is we'd like to have a sort of f final plan together probably by July or August, at which time we'd bring it to the congregation. We'll have a congregational meeting to discuss it. Um, the task force will also have meetings before that so that you can continue to provide feedback to us as we move ahead. But we would hope that in the best of all possible worlds, we might be able to have a pretty much final plan in place by September or so. So that's all I want to say. Dave is going to step through some, just quickly, some um, images that we have. And then we can retire to the fellowship hour and talk more specifically about what the plans are. And all I'd say is if you're on Zoom and can't be here, um, what I'd encourage you to do is we'll have an article in The Courier this next month or next week, excuse me, um, and we'll have some images and pictures there. And then one of the things I think we'll do is probably have a, zo a Zoom call. So if people at the end of a service want to, via Zoom, talk to Dave and myself or Francis or whomever, they can do that. So Dave, do you want to just step through some of the images? And sure. Um, I think most of you maybe uh, came to the annual meeting and saw some of the images. Um, apparently, they're very small today. Um, <laughs> But uh, we also have them in the, uh, I mean, in the vestry afterwards if you want to ask questions sp specific to them. Um, this is the basic layout. That has not changed for quite a while. The architect provided quite a few options and variations on the basic uh, site plan of, of the garden. And we went through a couple of iterations of that as well as we had a couple locations that we looked at. This location, if you can tell, up on the right-hand corner there, that's the church and the front porch. You walk out the front there, and the garden's on the west side. And it's just a beautiful spot. I mean, it's not so beautiful now because it's very kind of overgrown and rough, but it will be. It's a beautiful view um, and just a good location. Nothing else is happening there. So you can go to the next one. Um, and so this is a view kind of like shows what we're being calling the bump outs or be two places where you can sit and look at the, the piece of the lake, the mountains, the view of the valley. Um, that's down on the bottom left. A couple benches would be down there. And then the gathering space is in there with the church in the background. That's, you know, rough sketches, what it would look like in 20 years, probably very different bushes would grow up. The hope is that we get a lot of privacy from the road where the noise and trucks go by. So, next. Uh, that's just a view as if you were coming up the driveway and looking off to the left. Can't really see it in there, but that would be the mountains back in the background and um, the, the privacy screen as it grows up. And, you know, we've, we've been um, meeting as a task force quite a bit like it seems like every couple of weeks we meet. Um, we had a great meeting, a couple great meetings where we really did some brainstorming on what all the details will be. What's the furniture like? What's the plant material? How do we do the hardscaping on the, you know, for the, the gathering area and the walkways? They all need to be ADA compliant. Um, so we're making some progress there. We had a meeting with the architect just the other day and she's taking our input. There's a lot of input about plant material. Everybody has their favorites. And you know, even within the category of sustainable, like uh, pollinators, plants that don't need a lot of maintenance, um, those kind of things cut out a lot of plants that we might be familiar with if we grew up in Pennsylvania like me. Um, and so anyway, we're making some good progress. Hopefully you can come to coffee hour and take a look at what's on the wall. There's a little more detail, a little easier to look at. I think that's it with slides, right? 
Yeah, it must be. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave and Jim and everyone who's been working on that for so long. That is um, a powerful ministry. So, the power of the Pentecostal spirit enables proclamation filled with the spirit and with a tongue resting on each of us. What will we proclaim? What sounds will we make in this world to affirm the mystery and the power of the divine at work? Go in peace. <laughs>